Hi, it's Robin. We'll be taking a look at the C64 again. There's a new upgrade available for the firmware version 1.5.2. Last time we looked at update 1.4 and they had added support for utility cartridges like the Super Snapshot and also the option to do a soft reset. In version 1.5 they've added support for RAM expansion units like this. So now all this functionality that was my dream setup on my 90s Commodore 64 where I programmed games and demos. All this functionality is now available in the C64. The other major new feature is the ability to swap joystick ports on the fly. Previously you had to add an underscore J1 extension to your file name to virtually plug your joystick into port 1, otherwise it defaulted to port 2. But now that can be switched just with these buttons right here. So I'll just demonstrate that. I've written a little basic program here. All this program's doing is reading the joystick ports and displaying a number from 0 if the button and the joystick are not being pressed at all, and then a number for each direction and the joystick. I'll just show you that now. We'll run the program. Both joystick port 1 on the left and joystick port 2 are returning a 0. I push up on the joystick. You'll see it's now reporting 1. Down is 2. Left is 4. Right is 8. And the fire button, they're both the same, returns 16. And it'll add the values together if you do multiple movements at once, such as if you push down, that's 2, and right is 8, so together it displays 10, and then it'll add another 16, 26 in total if you press the fire button. So that's all displaying in the right-hand column because it's plugged into joystick port 2. All it takes now to swap to joystick port 1 is to hold down the menu button here, and while that's held down, press either A for port 1 or B for port 2. So we'll swap to port 1 by pressing A. And now you see the joystick is controlling port 2. See there it even slows down like a real C64. If you push left that's actually using the same input bit as the control key on the keyboard. So you see how the output slows down if you hold control? That's on purpose. But if you push left on a joystick in port 1, it also slows down. And to swap back to joystick port 2, just press and hold the menu, and then press B, the second button, for joystick port 2. And there we are. It's that easy. So I've demonstrated that in BASIC, but of course the main use of this is when you load up a game that uses a joystick in port 1, which is a minority of games. Mostly it's early Commodore 64 games that used joystick port 1 before programmers started noticing that it interferes with the keyboard use. But now it's as easy as holding those two buttons down to swap back and forth to support a game in joystick port 1. You won't find the joystick port swap in the menu system. It's just that button combination. If you hold down the left shift key and then tap the power button, it does a reset. Or if you hold down both Commodore and shift, then it does a hard reset where RAM gets wiped out as well. You can also navigate the menus without the joystick. I think I mentioned this last time. If you just tap the power button, it's kind of strange, but it's like a, an inverted T with U, H, J, and K. So H goes left and K goes right. And press space to select. We can go into the media access menu and move on top of the super snapshot cartridge image I found online. Those menus at the bottom show that the second from the left launches something, that's button B, 
So likewise, you can just press B on the keyboard and do the same thing. So we'll attach the Super Snapshot cartridge. And there it is. And again, back into the menu here. Media Access. And we'll attach Turbo Macro Pro just by pressing the space bar. And you see where it says disk drive down towards the bottom, it says TMP. This is just a file I made, Turbo Macro Pro. And I've added an underscore R5 to it when I was copying the file onto my USB stick. These are some new file name flags you can use. R5 adds a 512K REU. R2 adds a two megabyte REU. And RM, presumably for maximum, adds a 16 megabyte REU. In the case of the Turbo Macro Pro assembler that I'm going to be using today, it doesn't recognize more than a 512K REU anyway. So that's why I've added the underscore R5. So if we press F3, I'll do a disk directory. And then Turbo Macro Pro plus REU. I'm going to use the percentage sign to load that. And then we just have to SYS32768 to launch it. If you watch my other programming videos, then this is exactly the same, except we're doing it on this, the C64 recreation. And you see in the bottom right hand corner, 512K, that means it's detected the REU. And all we had to do was add that underscore R5. No more hacks are needed, like I had demonstrated in older videos. And again, into the media access menu, I'm going to switch to this Mars disk. Now, I did a video about Mars a couple months ago, walking through the source code of it. So check out a link in the video description for that if you want to see that in full. But I thought I'd use this just to show that my old development environment from the 90s, 2000s, totally works on this now. So I've attached the Mars disk. It's important to note that I added the underscore R5 to this file as well. If you attach a disk that does not have the REU flag set on it, your REU will actually disappear. So that's kind of a strange behavior that swapping disks makes the REU appear or not appear, but it is consistent with the file naming. You might not think it would work that way, but that's, that's how it does work. I don't find this to be a major inconvenience. I just had to add that underscore R5 to my source file disk. No big deal, but it is potentially a confusing gotcha. So watch out for that. Probably didn't mention it, just press tapping the power button exits the menu. So now we've attached that Mars disk. Back arrow star lists the directory. My latest version of it, MM32. So back arrow L, MM32 loads the source file. Now we can load the sprites into REU memory, back arrow Shift R, L for load, and then UFO sprites goes to 3F80, just as my comments remind me here. And back arrow Shift R load, laser beam 2 goes to 3FC0. And now we should be all set up. Back arrow 3 to assemble, and S to start, and there is my Mars game. Oh, fire's not working. Back arrow, and A, to swap joystick ports. Yep, there we go. I guess I made this a joystick port one game. Okay, and so on. And just hitting restore returns us to Turbo Macro Pro. And that's a hack I've shown before. Well, not really a hack, a little trick. Where you just point the jump back code for the assembler into the NMI vector here. So that when you tap restore, it automatically sends you back to Turbo Macro Pro. My favorite native development tools now work on the C64. So, you know, I fully recommend this now. 
if you, if you can manage to find one, they're still not producing uh, enough for demand, it seems. But if you can find one, it's better than ever. Now, if you just want to use Vice on your computer or whatever, that's totally fine. Some of the things I like about using the C64 are the keyboard has all the correct Petsky graphics on it, has the real restore key. It's nice just being able to have <laughs> the full keyboard and not be guessing around on the emulator. I still find that frustrating sometimes finding certain keys when they're mapped on a PC or Mac keyboard. Another advantage is just the direct HDMI out. And another big advantage is just having no distractions, whether I'm using my real C64 or the C64. I like just being able to hack away on it, play games, program, and not have any pop-ups, not have any interruptions. And the direct HDMI out, I find it easy to capture this with my capture device, which supports HDMI as well as the video out for my regular Commerce 64. I did cover using the REU on the C64 in a previous video as well with the hack method. And if you want to see, for example, GEOS running on the C64 with that, then check my older video. I'll put a link in the description. And I just want to show in particular Hessian. Now this game Hessian is a fairly new game from just a couple years ago, well 2018, written by Lassie Urni. Lassie's been making C64 games for years now. So there's the story down at the bottom there. Oh, he got shot. Arrgh, I'm no good to go on search the upstairs. Only a pass card we used to lock up this place. So Lassie has made these fantastic scrolling games and he's written a whole bunch. I'm not going to be able to talk and play this much at the same time. But anyway, he always makes really, to me, super impressive games. Oh, combat knife. Up, oh, combat knife. And got the pistol. Lassie has written many articles on C64 game development. He calls them rants. And if you're interested, definitely check out. I'll put a link in the description below. He talks about a lot of advanced game concepts and they are just excellent articles. Again, huge respect to him and congratulations for to him for getting his game on here. And a much simpler game, but Sean Bebbington's got his pet Snake 64 on here. I did a bit of beta testing of this for him. Anyway, it's cool. He wrote this all in basic. So if you actually press stop, there you can list the whole game. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Stop looking at my listing and play. And it's your typical snake. There we go. But anyway, it's... If you like snake games, it's very playable, especially considering it's in basic. And I should mention, if you just have a C64 Mini, you should grab this update as well, because it adds the joystick port swapping feature, and it brings up that media menu that lets you switch discs on the fly. So that is a huge update if you've got the Mini as well. And I really recommend you grab it. Okay, that's about it today. This is a bit of a shorter video. Before I go, I do want to give a few shout outs to other channels. I've really been enjoying Old Style Gaming, who's been doing a series of videos about hidden gem games 
for the C64, he's finding 10 games for each letter of the alphabet that aren't very well known. He's up to, I think, about M by now. I've been watching all of them. They're excellent. And they're just short videos where you just see each game for about a minute. So if you're looking for some C64 games that you haven't heard about before, definitely check out that series. Also, a shout out to Breadbox Commodore Computer Museum. Great guy from New Zealand who's working towards making a Commodore Computer Museum. He gave me a big shout out in his video about the C64 update. And I want to return the favor. Definitely check out his channel. And one more, 8-Bit Millie. He's a brand new channel. And he's been putting out a lot of videos. He loves the Coleco Atom. But also, he's done a few videos about the Timex Sinclair 1000, which was both his first computer and my first computer. So if you're looking for a new channel to check out, you might enjoy what he's doing. And finally, if you haven't already checked out my second channel, then please do. It's called 8-Bit Show and Tell 2 currently. Not a very imaginative name, but I'm posting other videos on there. Things that might be a little bit more niche, a little more raw, a little less editing. I mentioned a whole bunch of things today. If any of that interests you, you'll find links in the video description. Thanks to my patrons. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time.